Good morning. Thank you very much for coming in on this uh, rather cold day, which I think is itself a reminder of what's at stake. Um, Julia and I are going to talk about uh, the government's new gas generation strategy. And uh, I guess the question we're asking, all asking ourselves is, will this spark a second dash for gas? And for those of you who are old enough to remember, the dash for gas was the uh, stampede to develop gas-fired power generation starting in the early 1990s, following privatization of the electricity industry. So why does the government think uh, we need reform of the electricity market? Well, the government has three objectives. The first is to decarbonize energy generation, but at the same time, the government wants to keep the lights on uh, and looking at the weather conditions today keep us warm, uh, and the government also wants to keep energy bills affordable. There are inherent conflicts in those objectives and they have to be balanced. Um, the government's plans are ambitious to say the least. Uh, they're planning a substantial decarbonization of generation while maintaining competitive markets and this is a novel and very complex <coughs> enterprise. And will the rest of the world join in? We've just seen the recent Doha climate summit coming to an end with the Kyoto Protocol, which is the world's only currently legally binding agreement on emissions reductions, being extended till 2020, but there are fewer countries participating, and it now covers only around 12% of global emissions. I think the plan is for a global treaty to be secured in 2020, but in the meantime, commitments to carbon reduction seem to be an increasingly lonely place. So how has the government's uh, gas generation strategy evolved? Well, astonishingly, perhaps, gas did not really feature in the Electricity Market Reform White Paper of July 2011. You could say that at that stage, government's focus was on its first objective, which was decarbonization. But since then, I think the other two objectives have come rapidly and sharply into focus, um, perhaps spurred on by Treasury in recognizing the importance of both affordable energy and um, sustainable energy and keeping the lights on. So the government woke up about a year later and issued a call for evidence on the role of gas in the electricity market in May 2012 and finally published their gas generation strategy on the 5th of December. Um, this strategy envisages a very significant investment in gas-fired generation potentially 26 gigawatts of new gas-fired generation capacity by 2030. To put that in perspective, there's currently around 32 gigawatts of gas-fired generation at the moment. The, strat the strategy has a number of strands. Um, I think the central plank is enabling investment in gas generation. Um, there are noises about supporting carbon capture and storage, but that's really nothing new there. Uh, it's a continuation of the existing initiatives to support demonstration projects. Um, ensuring secure gas supply, uh, again, I'll come on to that uh, and talk about that very briefly. And also, um, there are statements about development and government's commitment to develop unconventional gas resources, principally shale gas. Looking at securing um, gas supply, Andrew's already commented on this, there's obviously concern that the gas markets could be vulnerable to supply disruptions due to increasing reliance on imports as domestic production falls, and we have relatively low storage capacity in the UK. The other factor is the changes in system requirements that Andrew mentioned, given the growth in renewable energy. So there have been calls for the government to intervene to support development of gas storage facilities, as Andrew mentioned. But at the moment, the government's saying that they're thinking about it, and so we're not seeing any new initiatives in the gas strategy that's just been announced, but they will be considering whether new measures will be required, and they'll publish their findings in spring next year. On the development of unconventional gas, um, the strategy recognizes that shale gas offers new sources of indigenous supply if production can be shown to be both economic and safe. So several specific initiatives are announced, setting up an, a new office of unconventional gas and oil to provide a single point of contact for investors. Uh, I'm not sure how much of a difference that will make, um, but it sounds good. Um, they're going to review whether changes are required to the licensing regime, um, particularly in relation to production, because there are just practical concerns about whether it's fit for purpose compared to the conditions that apply to uh, conventional gas. 
um, and perhaps critically, they're, com they're commissioning further work on environmental implications of further licensing, and they will conduct a full public consultation. Um, alongside this, the Treasury is developing a targeted tax regime for the shale gas industry, and they will report in a budget in 2013. Um, so the overall message is that the government seems to be enthusiastic in principle, but we're not yet at the stage of going full steam ahead. Um, and so I think that will be disappointing to some in the industry who, who are conscious that I think over 30,000 wells have been drilled in the United States and we're still scratching around for our own policy. Um, really, the central plank then, uh, in terms of concrete proposals uh, in, the in the new strategy, uh, is enabling investment in gas generation. Um, and this itself has a number of elements. Uh, first of all, again, I think led by Treasury, uh, they're emphasizing that there is in fact a cap on subsidies for low carbon generation under what they call their levy control framework. Um, there's also the interesting statement that we now plan to remain in step with Europe. Um, so that's a clear message that the UK is not going to stick its neck out and try and get ahead of our European colleagues in terms of our commitment to decarbonisation. Um, then there's the capacity mechanism, uh, which is the key, uh, perhaps the key, the key element along with the emissions performance standard, which is the next point that's mentioned in terms of encouraging investment in gas fired power generation. Um, and then there's a number of other points around re reforming the balancing arrangements, which um, some people say don't provide the right signals for investment, powers to intervene in the wholesale electricity market if it's insufficiently liquid, and improving the planning regime. But really it's the capacity mechanism and the emissions performance standard that I think are of the greatest interest um, to uh, investors in terms of uh, real and significant steps that will spur their uh, investment. So I'm going to hand over to Julia, who's going to talk about the capacity market. 